this morning. Faith formation resumes today for our children at 11.30 a.m. in the Parish Center. Teachers are needed to assist the children's liturgy of the word for our very young ones at the 10 a.m. Mass. Please call Terry Urban at the parish office to volunteer or for more information. If you ordered meatballs and sauce from the Guild, you may pick up your order in the kitchen of the parish center after Mass this morning. Please see the information in the bulletin regarding Tuesday's finance and annual corporation meeting. If you know someone who would like to learn more about the Catholic faith, please have them contact me at the office. There is a second collection taken up today for the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. All liturgical ministers of both parishes, they include ministers of communion, lectors, ushers, greeters, art and environment, and those who care for altar linens, all choir members and cantors, are requested to attend September 28th Refresh and Renew Session here at St. Mary's from 9 to 12 noon. Please call the office if you have any questions. There's a book of requests at the back of the church. These are to record your special intentions. We pray for these daily. There's a custom here at St. Mary's. At the end of the final hymn, we all kneel, silently saying three Hail Marys for the next one among us called home by God. Please check your cell phone now to make sure it is silent. Our opening hymn is number 522 in the Gather Hymnal. Our readings begin on page 128 with the Sunday's Word we select. Please join us now in our call to worship.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather this morning to give God our praise and our worship, let us thank Him for the times when He recovered us from being lost. And let us seek His mercy for the times when He had refused to help those who are lost. You came to call the lost. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You gave your life as ransom for many. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You gather the scattered into one flock. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them, then, then I will make you of a great nation. But Moses implored to the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants to their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment, and he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response for this song this morning is Psalm 151,
Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to have sinners. Of these I am the foremost, <clears throat> but for that reason I will mercifully I was mercifully treated, so that me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Deserve to be called your son. 
But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate the feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back, safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the land king. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just to accommodate everyone who wanted to be in this church. 
The brothers and sisters whose days are gone. Just look around. They're not here. There's something that I tell parents whenever I do an infant baptism. And I think it applies to us as well. I tell them that their child, whoever they grow up to be, is going to have a unique set of gifts and talents and abilities that no one else on planet Earth has ever had in exactly that same mix or ever will have. That's what makes us unique. God has created each one of us separately and gifted us in different ways. Think of what we do here as a symphony orchestra. Or if you're not doing classical music or rock band. I don't care, let's go both directions. But imagine it's the day of the big performance, it's the London Philharmonic. And we're all members of that. But for some reason, half of the violinists decide kickoffs in half an hour. Not gonna be there. And only a couple of cellos can get up early enough to make it to rehearsal, so the rest of them are just staying home. And some of the brass have other engagements, and the drummer wasn't prepared, so he's only got one stick. And here we are. Can we perform the music? Yeah, we probably can. But is it going to be as beautiful and rich and full as our God deserves? I say not. And I think that's where we are as a church right now. Because of the people who are no longer here, or those who've never been here, we're not the people that we could be. Our liturgy isn't as full and as great as our God deserves. And then looking outside these four walls, we can't carry out the mission of building the kingdom as efficiently as we could if everyone were a part of it. Now, I don't know what's changed. I don't have answers. And I'm hoping maybe the wisdom resides out here with you as to what is going on. But I know that we're diminished by the fact that those people are not here. Don't get me wrong. What we do here, we do very well. We have outstanding liturgies. We have a vibrant, alive parish that works throughout the community trying to help. But just think of what we could do and what we could be if we had everyone here. It staggers the imagination of what we could accomplish. Besides the common themes of something being lost and something being found in those parables today, there's one other theme that runs through them. And that's the theme of action. You don't see the shepherd and the woman and the father just sitting back and hoping that something's going to change. The shepherd leaves his sheep and actively looks for the one that's missing. The woman sweeps the house and searches until she finds that coin. And the loving father isn't just sitting back waiting for the son to reappear because we hear that he sees him while he's still far off and he runs to greet him. There's action in each of those stories. Now the first action we should all be taking, and I'm pretty sure we are, is prayer because there's nothing more powerful than that. But I think we need to go beyond that. I think that's what God is asking of me this day time through these readings to say prayer is good and necessary but now you need to take the next step we need to sit and think about who it is that we're not seeing here anymore or who it is that we think we would love to see here who's never been here before and then find some way through prayer through reflection through scripture to reach out to those people, to say, we need you here. See, it's not a matter of numbers. It's never been about the numbers. 
It's about what we can give to our loving God when we just come here each week. It's about what we can do outside of this building to build that kingdom that God has charged us to build. So that's my challenge. Join me with me this week to think about how can we pull these people back that we need so desperately in our community. Because when we get them back here, then we can perform that beautiful symphony led by our conductor Jesus. That symphony of love that we can only do properly with all of us here. Sony and Kay and Amorado, Cindy. 
Cindy Jawadi, and Georgia Palladino, and those whose names are listed in the bulletin, on the prayer plaque, and, intention, and intentions in the books of requests, that our love and prayers will bring them the healing and peace of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. From the faithful departed, whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, especially Nancy Govan and Rita Bansi, that they will share in the joy of the eternal banquet and parishioners of the Skylar Catholic community for whom this mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. And the intentions spoken in our hearts. That they will be heard and granted, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we praise you and thank you for the many graces and blessings you give us each day. Through the power of your Spirit, Transform us more into the image of Jesus, your Son, the Shepherd, that we may lead others to your love, who you live and reign as our God forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed, are, God of Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual dream. Blessed are you, Lord Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the fall of this holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings. That when each is offered to the honor of your name, may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly here on earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we now acclaim.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for just a brief minute, if you would, please.
Today we celebrate Catechetical Sunday, the beginning of our faith formation year, opening the doors of faith. As this date drew near, I had time to reflect on those who in my younger years opened the doors for me. There are my parents and grandparents, of course, but there were others who were offering themselves as examples of faith. Sister Bernice and Sister Conrad as I entered Catholic school, and Sister Matilda, who taught fifth grade part-time and was my principal, who also taught my mom. And then there was Mr. Ginto, who took this shy young girl under his wing and helped her own grow her own wings of faith. We have those same people here with us today, some who are veterans, and some who are embarking on this new journey of sharing their faith with the young ones among us. They now have the opportunity to do the same thing that my teachers did and help create memories and help open those doors of faith for a new generation as leaders of prayer. When I call your name, please stand. Dawn Coleman, Melissa Johnson, and Jennifer Booth, who are just beginning this journey in our community. Sue Olevnik, Kristen Gustick, Kathy Gaston, Tammy Cooper, Trish Burbank, and Angie Francis, who bring a various number of years of wisdom and experience. Also with them today are some of our young people who get to share in this journey with them, opening those doors of faith. I ask my young people to please stand up. And to our community of faith, I ask you to stand as well in careful support of these fellow journeyers, raising your hands as we offer prayer for them as they embark on this journey. Lord God, source of all wisdom and knowledge, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to live among us and to proclaim this message of faith, hope, and love to all nations, opening the doors of faith for us all. In your goodness, bless our brothers and sisters who have offered themselves as prayer leaders for your church. Strengthen them with your gifts, that they may teach and lead by word and by example the truth that comes from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I just extend my deepest gratitude to you and to Jeannie, who heads up our Faith Formation Program. Thank you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 